Do do di. It's Nandi. Hello, friends. I'm back today with a video that goes over the new Halloween survival event, with Asgore as the featured character. This is the second time we've seen the survival event following its use for Titus last month, and it looks like survival will be a recurring game mode in Tacticus. Today, I'll go over this event, show you some of the new features, and then also do some analysis on the best characters to bring along. My apologies in advance. The video is a little bit rushed, but I wanted to get something out to you in advance of the event starting. Let's dive straight in. Clicking on the banner in-game immediately takes you to a simple initial explanation of the event. Play the mode to earn points. These points convert to Oath Currency, which lets you open crates full of rewards. You essentially fight against a horde of Tyranids that become increasingly more difficult as the waves progress. There are the usual offers and 7-day celebration calendar to run alongside the event. As with the last survival event, there are missions to complete that earn you currency, and these missions can be completed by simply playing the game. They don't have to be completed within the survival game mode itself. There's also a special mission at the bottom that you can complete 20 times. Each time you complete the mission, you get a 7% stat boost to Asgore's health and damage. Complete all 20 missions and Asgore gets a bonus 140% health and damage. There is a leaderboard where you can vie for position and earn more currency depending on your placing. The crates go up to level 30 and I'm cycling through the rewards on screen to give you a flavour of how much better they get as you progress. Pressing play takes you to this screen where you can see the bonus power-ups and the enemies to fight at each stage. Some of the power-up icons look different now, like the reinforcement power-up. And there is also a new bomb power-up, which lets you do area of effect blast damage to all enemies within three hexes. This power-up levels up with you, so you can try to save it for later stages and it would do an amount of damage relevant to your current rarity. There's also a new enemy to fight against called the Pure Strain Gene Stealer. This unit has the Ambush, Infiltrate and Unstoppable traits. We are familiar with Ambush from Sibia's kit, but as a reminder, this lets the unit respawn on a decoy once it is killed for the first time. You can get rid of decoys by stepping on them, or through indirect attacks like Let the Galaxy Burn or Smite. For this event you can use Chaos characters only. Your characters start off at a low rarity and become stronger as you defeat waves of enemies. As a reminder, you can press the information button for more information about the waves and units, and you can also press the skip wave button on the top left, which gives you bonus points at the cost of potentially becoming overwhelmed. Players start at two tokens with five maximum tokens and a regeneration time of 12 hours and one minute. The event runs over seven days, but because of timers, you won't be able to use the last token. By my math, that gives you a total of 15 tokens to try your luck with. With the basics out of the way, we can take a look at which characters do well and which ones don't, along with some gameplay and explanations. On his own tier or category is Corodius. Corodius has two things that really elevate his status and make him the premier choice. His Contagions of Nurgle Aura gives friendly Chaos units plus one movement if they start their turn there. This will be vital to success, especially when you consider how slow moving the other characters are. His active ability summons Poxwalkers, and when you wait long enough, quite a lot of Poxwalkers can be summoned. These are self-replicating summons that also do a lot of damage, and can one-shot enemy units at equal rarity as well as the next rarity up. So, for example, an uncommon ranked Poxwalker can still one-shot enemies at the rare cap. This active ability will prove crucial, and you should aim to collect the active recharge power-ups with Corodius as often as possible. I fill out the rest of the top team with Maladus, Rotbone, and Rask. Maladus is able to kill multiple enemies in one turn with his abilities, which is really important in this wave-based survival mode. Rask can provide a bit of sustain for himself and adjacent allies through his shield. Rotbone completes the team as the only Chaos Healer, a necessary evil for these sorts of game modes. Rotbone is better than Incisus in the same role last time around, due to his reasonable attack and stacking the Contagions of Nurgle Aura, allowing your other units to have an easier time killing enemies. 
there are some characters in this tier list that people might be wondering about. I'll break down these choices and justifications. Ancrax is a Black Legion Terminator who is normally a powerhouse in legendary release events. Leaving him next to a spawn point can mean he automatically kills enemies as they come out. However, Angrax's value is diminished here because as you can see, when Angrax is the same level as the enemies, his passive is not guaranteed to kill them. There are also four spawn points on the map, so lots of the enemies will spawn in a way that Angrax cannot attack them straight away. Finally, the pure strain gene stealers have that annoying ambush trait, which means that your units will want to stand in the decoys to prevent resurrection. Angrax isn't particularly mobile, and if he stands on the decoys, he's potentially giving up his camping spot next to the spawn points. On paper, Karn might seem great. He can attack two enemies in one turn with his passive ability, and starts his turn by charging and making another attack, potentially letting him kill three enemies in a single turn. That's a really valuable thing to have in horde modes, but in my testing I found it challenging to get that positioning perfect. When Karn attacks your own units, you're in for a really bad time. I kind of like Ariman. He's on the fragile side, but with flying he is a good option to collect power-ups and his active ability organically recharges several times over the course of the battle. He is not top top tier, but he's a fun and reasonable choice. He works better if you have other sources of fire in your team to supercharge his active. Archie is another okay character. His abilities are great at potentially triggering extra hits onto the decoys, which makes your life a lot easier. He is defensively fragile though and not always guaranteed to one-shot enemies, particularly at range. He works better with a damage buffer like Abraxas, Abaddon or Ascor. Otherwise, he needs to pick up a hits or damage power-up to provide a steady stream of bloodletters. FMG, Tacticus Ambassador and Friend has kindly helped me out with some footage and gameplay insights. I'll let the gameplay run through to illustrate some of the earlier talking points. Here we get our first taste of the Pure Strain Gene Stealers. After killing them, they leave behind a decoy token and they respawn and attack on the subsequent turn. Next you can see the power of the Poxwalkers. We summon them on level 6 for the first time and they straight away kill a load of enemies and self-replicate. In fact, there are so many of them that they continue to be a powerful defensive tool as subsequent waves arrive, killing many enemies again and giving your main characters some breathing room. The main goal of your runs is to try and get Corodius to every active refresh power-up, which is not easy given that he only moves two himself and the map can become clogged up by his own summons. Here, when we summon with the Poxwalkers again, one stands on the bomb power-up and this detonates, killing the nearby enemy Tyranids. I haven't shown you the whole run because frankly it's a bit boring to watch somebody play for 20 minutes, especially when there will be variation in your own run and it isn't repeatable. Hopefully, this still provides some useful insights and basis for your own attempts. Okay, I'll maybe sign off there. I've just started a Patreon for my channel. If you are fortunate enough to be in a position to support me and my content, I'd love it if you could check it out. If not, I've left FMG's referral code here on screen. If you are a newer player, you can enter it and earn yourself 100 Blackstone. Supporting him supports me, but it is single use though, so choose who you support carefully. Bye for now. Doo -doo -dee. It's Nandi!